Well, I did survive the storm and just stopped at the side of the road for a refreshment. Uh, today is going to be a fairly short day. Um, just after 1pm, uh, just been taking it slowly today. Probably only do about 40, 50 kilometres at most today, I think. Um, it might be a bit of rain a little bit later, so keen to end before uh, I finished. Um, I've only had a mouthful of bread today and then it got a bit dry and uh, wasn't really enjoying it. So I may stop for a wee bite to eat at a cafe. Well, I am now sorted in my campsite. I'm going for a paid campsite again tonight. Um, and I've got an ice cream. I don't normally eat ice creams. But I'll make an exception on a hot day. I was expecting a lot more hostility from French people. Um, but so far, certainly in the south and on the way up to here people mostly say hello as you go past and sometimes when you've stopped they'll come up and talk to you and I think I've become something of a curiosity for them um, they see cyclists all the time um, but they don't often see people from New Zealand cycling such a long way um, and they're generally very encouraging. Uh, when I'd set out, as I said, I expected French people to be abusing me at every possibility. I even researched purchasing a loud hailer so that I could uh, give them instant reviews on TripAdvisor via my loud hailer uh, about how terrible their village was. but. They've been quite quaint and kind and interested and have sold me some nice bread and wine and this afternoon and ice cream. It's something we don't see in certainly big city New Zealand, people saying hello to strangers. If you do it Lambton Key, people will think you're a bit odd to say hello, even if it's somebody you're related to. They're too busy heading their way to an important two-hour coffee meeting with a colleague to even acknowledge your existence. So it's a nice thing here in France and Spain and in the Mediterranean generally for people to acknowledge your existence. It makes you feel less dead. Perhaps the greatest example of my evolution as a highly organised uh, camping person is that I have come up with this meal tonight. It's ravioli with beef and I'll just give that a stir so that it doesn't stick to the pot. Um, and because on Sundays uh, most places in France are closed including supermarkets after midday and who wants to go to a supermarket before midday I made a point of getting an extra meal well all the ingredients for the extra meal last night and this is the creation I think that's quite something and as you can see in the video it also came from a can Ravioli, more beef. Thank you, Super U. Uh, I think I'm going to make the most of this tonight. A new day has started. I'm at the Boulangerie, the Marie Blacher chain, which I first visited in uh, one of my first stops um, on the tour. There are 500. Marie Blacher stores and they've got coffee as well as pastries and sandwiches. Uh, a lot of the local small time boulangerie don't do coffee. Um, so this place is like it's like the Mr. Bun of France. They've got everything you need all in one store. 
and it's not a bad breakfast. And the coffee's kind of terrible. So it's, uh, there's a westerly wind blowing about 30 kilometres an hour uh, straight off the Mediterranean. Um, unfortunately I don't have to cycle into it uh, too much. It's quite refreshing. As I uh, head along, I'm not sure how far I'm going to go today or where to. I'm just going to keep going until I'm fed up. changes, the food changes, although regional food for me is really what kind of sauce they have on their special burgers at McDonald's. This is my first recording actually cycling on the bike. Um, I haven't yet worked out how to make it landscape, um, but everything just takes incremental improvements. Uh, going through a forest of course, uh, it's about 3pm, pretty warm, uh, and the track is smooth but quite undulating and there's a lot of other people on it um, groups of cyclists are either very um, considerate of others or otherwise they just couldn't give a fly on the bright side what filming me while I'm cycling does do is, is prove to my detractors that I am actually pedalling to places and not just jumping on a train in a blind corner, jumping on a train from point to point. The track is bit sandy in parts which is pretty perilous because you think you think you're fine and then you plump into a mound of sand and start going nowhere very quickly and things can slide out from under you particularly when you've got a 35 kilogram rig below you I'm just in saint jean de mont uh, in the north of the Vendée. Uh, there is an eight kilometre long beach along this esplanade that's very popular in the height of summer for, um, for holiday makers. All along this stretch, eight kilometres long, there are these big holiday apartment buildings. And uh, they're not expensive to buy, they're mostly empty right at the moment, but come July they'll be packed with French holiday makers when they begin their 23 weeks of annual holidays. It's something quite egalitarian, no big mansion, it's just people coming from the cities out to the Atlantic for a place by the sea. And I'm not sure I like egalitarianism. There's nothing particularly pretty about the buildings, but uh, it's not a bad view. Okay, it's after 8 p.m., uh, quarter past eight actually. Um, the campsite, nearest campsite, is closed for the night. So I'm going to have to wild camp again. Um, at a place where there's a picnic table. There's a sign over there and there's nothing on the sign that says no camping. Um, the days are getting much longer. Um, 
So I didn't mind cycling up till 8 p.m. Sunset isn't till 9.30, after 9.30 tonight. So I'm just going to be very quiet and set myself up for the night here and hope that none of the locals get too angry that I'm not adding to their tourism revenue. I don't mean to talk up my game, but this may be the most impressive erection I've had all day. Um, only took, oh I didn't even count the minutes, there were so few of them. And we've even got dinner on. Tonight's meal, ravioli bolognese, but I think I need to give it a stir because it's coming along rather quickly and burning one's bottom in the middle of nowhere can be a pain in the arse. I'm just in uh, the town of Bois, quite an impressive church here. Two and a half thousand people live here, but they've got this big, big mighty church from the, originally from the 14th century, um, rebuilt in the 17th century. Um, and at the end of the 18th century, uh, during the reign of terror, oh look, the bell tower is going up. One. I think we'll get to 11. Well, it took a while. During the reign of terror after the French Revolution, uh, the, there was a war in the Vendée, counter-revolutionaries um, basically just annoyed at how, um, how excessive uh, things had got in Paris. Um, they were rounded up and attacked in the Vendée, particularly in Nantes, uh, but here in, uh, in Bois, 85 people crowded in this church, including 65 women and children and they were pretty much all massacred afterwards. Um, the great cause of liberty, equality, fraternity didn't apply to them. For just my second time on this journey in France, I've been traveling on a method other than bicycle. I have crossed uh, the Loire River by ferry boat just down there. The Loire is the longest river in France, uh, more than a thousand kilometres. It starts in the, um, where are we? It starts in the uh, Massif Central, way up there, about uh, 900 kilometres to the north, and it ends in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, about 40 kilometres down the way. There is a bridge that crosses into Saint-Nazaire that Technically, cyclists can use, but uh, you have to be a bit of an evil Knievel to uh, to give it a try. Um, <coughs> it's uh, it's quite a feat crossing a river on a bicycle. That's why it's easier to just jump on the ferry. And this one also has the benefit of being free, thanks to the European Union. So thank you, Brussels. Having crossed the Loire, I'm now in Brittany and officially in northern France. Um, and a lot has changed already. Uh, Brittany is the last major Celtic part of France uh, and is much closer culturally and linguistically to uh, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Cornwall, the Isle of Man. Uh, the six Celtic nations than it is to uh, the uh, French language and culture. Uh, the architecture has changed, the climate has changed, it's a bit cooler 
and um, even the topography is different uh, as my good friend Ashley told me expect lots of hills in Brittany I think it was to intimidate me rather than to inform me so today is my first day on the cycle trail where I didn't get close to my target I had set out to do about 60 kilometers today um, and actually I only did 40 and the reason was that I had a toilet emergency and there were no McDonald's nearby where I could find relief um, but I did find there was a campsite uh, and it was open so I quickly went and checked in and used the facilities. They don't have toilet paper in the facilities here. You're supposed to bring your own. Um, toilet paper takes up a lot of space. So I have since acquired some toilet paper. Other important things I got in the shop in order to make my quite spectacular Boeuf Bourguignon, I'm quite a fan of Boeuf Bourguignon, was this can here. Also, this can, the same one, because when you're an adventurer like me, you need to eat for two. And just to top it off, I've got a bottle of local wine with um, what looks like a domain big house on the front, so you know it's good. Just a simple ham and cheese baguette, but butter gives it a lift. I haven't bothered making one myself because every time you go to a boulangerie they can make one right there for you and uh, if I didn't go and buy things from them they'd probably all go broke. Um, I'm making my way along the canal, uh, a canal in Brittany uh, that goes from Nantes to Brest uh, making my way along to Redon uh, this afternoon. I've got uh, about 75 kilometres to cover today, uh, about halfway through. It started quite late because it rained heavily overnight um, and wanted everything to dry up before I got moving. Uh, but should be there in a couple of hours' time, I think. Not sure where I'm going to stay, uh, but I'll sort it out when I get there. So where I've stopped for tonight, the um, camping site uh, for the town is closed until June, and I'm not going to wait around until June to stay the night here. Um, I've already covered 85 kilometres today. Uh, but I'm not feeling too exhausted. Uh, I've got very little food, um, which I'll show you later, uh, but I'm gonna push on for a little bit. Um, it's not yet 7 p.m. and if I can get another 15 kilometers uh, along the way, uh, it means that tomorrow's uh, journey will be much more mild. Uh, I've got uh, a pretty spectacular place to stay tomorrow night, um, but you'll see that later in the film. And sometimes when you see an opportunity, you need to change your plan. This is a cider. <clears throat> very refreshing uh, and I've got a meal on the way so I'm not going to go to sleep tonight hungry not sure where I'm going to go to sleep but it won't be hungry
and it's clear I'm not going to go hungry tonight. Let's see if there is anything left at the end.